everybody, and welcome to my last speech for the semester for the speech class. Thankfully, it is the last speech of the class because this is probably going to be a rather unpopular topic I'm bringing up, and that is gun control. Or more specifically, why gun control does not work. Now, before we really get delving into the specifics as to why, I'm just going to throw a number out there, and that is 70%. Now, remember that here for a moment, and before we get into spe spe uh, specifying what about that means, I'm going to go step by step through the process a normal person does to legally buy a firearm. Now, step one, obviously, you go to your local firearms dealer, and you find something you like, and <clears throat> before you can even trade money with them and walk out the door with it, you have to fill out a form provided by the Bureau of Alcohol, Alcohol Tobacco, and Firearms and Explosives, the Form 4473. Now, this is a six-page form and asks you a whole bunch of questions, such as your... Um, date of birth, where you live, your name, so on and so forth, the common sense kind of things. And after that, you hand it back to the dealer, and the dealer has to make a call to the national database called the NICS, or NICS, for, which is, well, more commonly known as NICS, I should say, the National Instant Criminal System. Now, this is a joint system run by both the FT, F. BI, I should say, and the ATF, and the <clears throat> person on the end of it, other end of that line is going to give the dealer either a yes or no as to whether you can buy that firearm after he provides all the answers that you gave to him via the Form 4473. Now, of course, as I said, this is how a normal person such as you and me would go about legally purchasing a firearm. Now the problem is, and why this doesn't truly work, is that we're coming back to this 70% number now, and that is, of the um, criminals that have been arrested and had a firearm on them, in 70% of those cases, those firearms were not legally purchased. They were either A, straw purchases, which is when somebody else buys the gun for them under their name rather than the person who was actually possessing the weapon at the time, or they bought it somewhere off the black market, such as their drug dealer or some other person who was tr transporting and having those weapons illegally in the first place. Now the thing is, about the whole straw purchasing thing on the ATF form 4473 question 11a actually asks right off the bat if you are the actual purchaser of this firearm and that is where the straw purchase thing comes into question now another thing about the um, crime rate used with firearms involved is that in 2008 alone there were 300,000 violent crimes involving firearms. But, on the other hand, conversely, in that same year, there was a range from at least 500,000, anywhere up to 3 million uses of firearms in self-defense by legally law-abiding citizens. Now, the reason I would surmise for this disparity why it's such a wide gap between those two numbers is probably the CDC cited those numbers from several different databases and they probably had different criteria as for what the actual self-defense use of a firearm was because it, it, it could have varied anywhere from actually using that firearm, actually shooting it at a criminal that they were trying to defend themselves against or if it was just drawn and that was what made them stop doing the criminal action. Now another fact, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, now another uh, citation I'd like to use as to the ineffectiveness of gun control is the city of Chicago. Now the city of Chicago 
in the state of Illinois as well, since most of the laws trickled down from Chicago, is one of the cities in the United States with the strictest gun control. Even with that, the um, in 2016 alone, so far, there have already been 757 people killed. Now, these facts are coming from this website that I never thought I'd get the opportunity to say this, that the title of the website is called HeyJackass.com. Now, as I say, they show all sorts of nice factoids about the city of Chicago. I don't really think you can see all the charts, but... Um, there's some of them such as how often somebody gets shot and how often somebody dies from being shot. How many people have been shot and wounded. How many people have been shot and killed alone just for this year. <clears throat> it also breaks it down as to where they got shot and other interesting factoids like that. But still, the fact that, like I said before, the... Chicago is one of the cities with the strictest gun control measures in the country, and yet they have <clears throat> likely one of the highest murder rates in the United States is proof in the pudding, I suppose, that gun control doesn't actually work because criminals are going to get their hands on guns either way. Of course, they could probably go on for few more hours about the ineffectiveness of gun control, but I think I'll just leave it at the old adage to have the only way to beat a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun, because that's what I do for a living.